بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحباب continuing on in our treaties uh, once again gentleness of all people of the Sunnah with the people of the Sunnah we were talking about where Sheikh and Sheikh Abdul Masin uh, mentioned and he was quoting from Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala where he said, from amongst those who mentioned this is Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, the like of these scholars, meaning if a scholar makes a mistake, uh, but he's from Ahl sunnah he falls into an error, and uh, but he didn't fall on, into this error based upon his desires, then he's still from Ahl sunnah and he still has a lot of khair to offer. So Shaykh al-Islam said, the people, the like of these scholars who make a mistake, yet it is expiated, meaning it's, it's forgiven, if they do not use their innovative statements as a criterion to divide the body of the Muslims, so they're not causing tafarraq, and they do not base their loyalty and their enmity on this statement of theirs, al-wullah wal baraz not based upon their statement, uh, then their statement is classed as a mistake, and the law of the glorified forgives these types of mistakes of the believers. These type of mistakes often occur from many, uh, often occurred from many of the salaf of this ummah, this is what Shaykh Islam said, uh, and their leaders, they made certain mistakes, uh, certain statements, striving to be upon the truth. However, in reality, they oppose that which has been established in the book and the sunnah. This is different to the one who only associates with who he agrees, who agrees with him, disassociates from the one who opposes him and causes disunity amongst the Muslims. That's a powerhouse. This is a statement of Sheikh Islam. Just reflect and think about your communities. D d are there people who fit this? Uh, fit the statements of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah? Are we practicing what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is, is, is advising us to practice? To, to be uh, forgiving and to realize that, you know, we all have shortcomings and mistakes and that sometimes a person can fall into those mistakes and not be an innovator? Are we practicing that or are we going doing the opposite and being only uh, one-sided and only taking the path of harshness and sternness with people? Imam al Dhahabi said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, if it was the case that every time a scholar made a mistake in particular, in a particular issue, which in reality he only did out of ijtihad, the type of mistake that is forgiven, if in this situation we would arise against him, declare him to be an innovator, and boycott him, then nobody would ever be safe and sound with us. Neither Ibn Nasr, Ibn Mumba, uh, nor those who are greater than them. It is Allah alone who guides the creation to the truth. He is the most merciful. We seek refuge in Allah from desires and undesirable characteristics. These are very powerful statements from our Salaf, from uh, Imam, from Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and Imam al Dhahabi, and others. You know, very powerful statements, but we, we need to take heed and not be so quick to call, call people innovators. Uh, without the deal, without evidence to do so, without the right to do so, and even to involve ourselves in these issues, especially if we're not at least students of knowledge or something. Then he said, he also said, if we were to fe defame and declare a person to be an innovator every time that person made a mistake due to his itch he had, whilst maintaining correct faith and striving and adhering to the truth, then there would be very few people who are left safe from amongst the great scholars. May Allah have mercy upon them all from his bounty and kindness. Meaning everyone may say, even the great imams. Do you think we quote, how many uh, students of knowledge you hear quote, and of course we hear the scholars quoting from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Did he not make any mistakes? You can't say he didn't make a mistake in an issue. You can't, no one can say this. No one can say this. Uh, as Imam Malik, who came way before him, Rahimullah Ta'ala said, said, you know, kul, what means kullu yusib wa yukhti illa sahiba hadha qabr or illa ina. Something which means Imam Malik was teaching rahimahullah ta'ala in the haram in the Prophet's masjid and he said everyone uh, makes mistakes and gets things correct. Now I'm paraphrasing because I have, haven't memorized the exact uh, text but this is basically what, what he said. So everyone, they make mistakes and they uh, and they get issues correct, except the inhabitant of that grave. And he pointed towards in the direction of the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So meaning that uh, all of us, you know, can can be refuted on something. We make a mistake, 
And sometimes we get things correct. But no one is infallible. And that's, that's imperative for us to, believe, to realize and believe. That's part of our Aqidah even. Ibn al-Jawzi ta'ala has mentioned that sometimes the reason for disparagement and criticism is one's own desire. So uh, Ibn al-Jawzi ta'ala also mentioned that some of the people had fallen into this in his time and before him. That some of the people, they had uh, criticized individuals and praised individuals based upon their desires. So what about us now? We have so much of this. We have a lot of people... They uh, criticize individuals if they disagree with them on an issue or they're not down with their jama'ah, they're not uh, making da'wah with their group or what have you. Even if they're calling to the principles of Ahl Sunnah, they refute them or they attack them, mainly because they're not with them. It's, and that means that's based on your desires. That's your desires because Allah didn't make you a criterion. Allah didn't make me, you, or any of us a criterion. But the, what is Al-Furqan? It's the Qur'an. It's the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Those are our measuring. That's what we use to measure our deeds. And that's what we use to measure our conduct. And that's what we use to measure and, and do our mu'amalat and all of our practices and all of our daily activities. That's where it comes from. Kitab al-Sunnah. <clears throat> so Ibn al-Jawzi said, has mentioned that sometimes the reason for disparagement and criticism is one's own desires. He said in his book, I met many scholars their levels differing in terms of knowledge. Meaning scholars have different levels. The most beneficial companion from amongst them for me was the one who acted by his knowledge, even if there was somebody else who was more knowledgeable to him. I also met a group of scholars of Hadith. They had memorized and possessed a lot of knowledge. However, they would backbite others in the pretext of it being from the sciences of Jarwa Ta'adil. I also met Abdul Wahab al-Anmati, and he was upon the way of the Salaf. We never heard backbiting in any of his sittings. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This statement is so relevant to us. This statement is so powerful and so relevant to us. How many people under the guise of Jarwa Ta'adil, ta and this is what the ulama are saying. How many people using these principles, trying, abusing these principles, and doing it based on their desires? You didn't sit with us, you're not with us, we saw you at such and such masjid, we, you gave the lecture in that masjid, oh look at him, he's with those people, da, 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 you know, quickly. And then they criticize and destroy everything good about the, the brother or the sister. This is a masiba kubra. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and the people and bless us to practice these kawaid with fiqh fi deen. Then he said, Hafidhullah ta'ala, or, or Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala said, from the deceptions of Iblis upon the people of Hadith is that some of them disparage and criticize others seeking to defeat and overcome one another to satisfy the anger they feel in their hearts. They do this in the pretext of Jarwa Ta'adil, which in reality is a science used by the previous scholars in defending the Sharia. And Allah knows best people's true intentions. Allahu Akbar. So, so relevant. What else do we need to say? Please go back to these statements. He also said, uh, then Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Muslim said, if this was the situation at the time of Ibn al-Jawzi, and he died in 597 Hijri, then how about the people in the 15th century, meaning now? Uh, and then he said, a recent, uh, a recently, Recently, a very valuable book has been published which is entitled Clarification on How Ahl Sunnah Will Jama'ah Treat Each Other in Cases of Differing. This is a very powerful book. Perhaps someone will translate it in, in the future. But very good. If you uh, are an Arabic reader, please put it in your mektaba. This book right here. It's called Ibana. Al-Ibana on Kayfiyyata Ta'amu Mal Khilaf Bayna Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. It's by Sheikh Muhammad Al-Imam as we mentioned before. We mentioned this in the beginning. Of the treaties. And so this would be a fantastic book for someone to translate. And I think they've translated little bits and pieces of it. Some some brothers, and may Allah reward them for that. I mean. Shaykh Abdul Muslim said in this book, he said, authored by Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdullah uh, Al Imam from Yemen. Five other scholars from Yemen have recommended this book by writing introductions to it. This book comprises of many statements of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, both past and present, specifically Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn al-Qayyum, may Allah have mercy upon them both. 
This book is an advice to Ahl Sunnah to deal with each other in a good manner. I've read many of the chapters in this book and benefited from this specifically. Some re some re some of some references pointed to the statements of the two scholars Ibn uh, Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al Qayyim. So I advise everybody to read this book and benefit from it. This is the advice of Sheikh and Sheikh Abdul Masin to read the book of Sheikh Muhammad uh, Al Imam. Then he said, Sheikh Muhammad Al Imam made a very good statement in this book. Somebody, he's quoting him now, somebody may disparage and criticize somebody else from Ahl Sunnah. And due to this fitna of boycotting, discord, uh, discord, and differing becomes rife, and it may even lead to fighting between Ahl Sunnah. When this occurs, it becomes known that the criticism led to fitna. It is therefore important to reconsider the way in which a person is criticized and perceive the potential benefits and harms. It is important to realize the means in maintaining brotherhood and preserve the Dawah, and also to remedy the mistakes. It is not correct to remain upon this method of criticism and disparagement which leads to all these harms. Allahu Akbar. This is all, the ulama, this is how you can tell also. This is a, another very important thing to give us guidance and direction. Whenever you're listening to lectures and durus, and you hear statements, and especially if people give you what a, a principle or something, then you should be able to relate that principle back to what the ulama have said and what the salaf of this ummah said. You know, there should have been a precedence for that. What Sheikh Muhammad Ali Imam has said is what Sheikh Abdul Masin said. What Sheikh Abdul Masin said is what Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, and also what Sheikh Salim Ibn Fozan in our time said, and what many other scholars of this time said, and what the from from the Salaf of this Ummah, what Ibn Al Qayyim said, and Ibn Jozi said, and Subhanallah, and Imam Dhabi, and before them, Subhanallah. This is very important that we have to be cautious. You have to fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala when you're criticizing individuals. You need to have the knowledge and the fiqh and the understanding to be a person who has the right to do that. Because not everyone has the right to do that. If you're not a student of knowledge, you haven't studied anywhere, you haven't uh, you know, done that much talib al-ilm, then just keep silent. If you've done some talib al-ilm, keep silent. If you've done a little more than that, perhaps it's best to still keep silent. And if you have the ability to look at these issues, then also look at the masalim and mufasid. Look at the harms and the benefits. As these great imams have said from this time up on uh, up until those who preceded us they said look at the harms and the benefits we have to weigh these things in all of these issues and make sure you have a khlas lillah there is no doubt that the other scholars and students of knowledge from amongst the Sunnah also feel that which their Yemeni brothers have felt and they are pained by this discord and differing they also desire to, sin to sincerely advise however the Yemeni brothers have preceded them in this so may Allah reward them with good. Hopefully this advice that the Yemeni scholars have given is included in the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, faith is, is Yemeni and wisdom is Yemeni. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Iman, Yemani, wal-Hikmah Yemaniya. Yemaniya, or kama qala Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So faith is Yemeni and wisdom is Yemeni. So the Shaykh was saying that he hopes that this wisdom that those mashayikh in Yemen that have been trying to deal with the issues and the fitna that they had to deal with between some of the mashayikh there, the way they were dealing, especially those ones who really took the ropes and led the, the reins like Sheikh uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al-Wasabi, half of Allah Ta'ala, and Sheikh Muhammad al-Imam, and of course Sheikh uh, Abdul Rahman Adani, who was came you know, steadfast and not contributing to the fitna, even though he was... Uh, being accused and attacked, as well as our Sheikh, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Abdullah al-Mar'i al-Adani as well. That also, the Sheikh only taught us to just uh, seek knowledge. Even he was under attack. Even the people, some of the other Mashaykh wouldn't even stop and visit us when they came to that beautiful Markaz Mubarak in Sheher, Dar al-Hadith. But the Sheikh still never, he, matter of fact, we had buses to go from there to go to those lectures of our other Mashaykh, even though they were taking a position of of caution with the Shaykh at that time. And so, the point being is those Mashayikh that led the way to and, and, and helped to squash the fitna by not fueling the fire and by busying the people with knowledge. Then, uh, 
the Sheikh mentioned, it is hoped that the object objective behind the writing and distribution of the advice given by the Yemeni brothers will be actualized and fulfilled. I do not think that anybody from Ahl Sunnah will encourage this methodology of a disparagement and attaching importance to it, whilst knowing that it only results in enmity, hate, and hatred between Ahl Sunnah and hardness of the hearts. The one who possesses some intellect does not cease to be amazed by this situation, whereby the secularists are trying their utmost to cause corruption in the land of the two holy sanctuaries, meaning Mecca and Medina, after it has been rectified, particularly some of their conferences and exhibitions in Jeddah, which they have falsely named the Khadija bint Khawarid uh, Forum. Khawarid, uh, Forum. I have, all, I have already written an article entitled, It is not appropriate to use the name of Khadija bint Khawarid for the promotion of feminism. I say despite this condition in this time, some of Ahl Sunnah only occupy themselves with others amongst themselves and warning from them. This is Sheikh Abdul Masin al uh, Abdul Masin al Abad speaking. Uh, he said, I ask Allah, the majestic and exalted, that He guides the people of the Sunnah in every place to adhere to the Sunnah, to unite their hearts, and that He guides them to cooperate with each other upon righteousness and piety. I ask Him to remove the discord and difference that exists between them. I also ask Allah the Almighty to guide all the Muslims to gain understanding of the religion and firmness upon the truth. May the peace and safety uh sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Abdul Masin ibn Hamid al-Abbad al-Badr and this was written uh, in the 16th of Muharram 1432 uh, December 22nd 2010 and this was uh, very very beneficial and this treatise has a lot to offer, and I hope that the people will actually read it. And if those people who are listening to our lessons will benefit from this, we hope, because uh, I do believe, and that's why I had a passion for trying to uh, teach this and also bring some other fawaid and make some ta'liqat, because, you know, we see the great fitna and harms that we, we deal with between our brothers and even for teaching this, perhaps, maybe I'll fall under attack. And this is, it shows us the, the sad state of affairs that we're in, that Ahlul Sunnah, uh, between Ahlul Sunnah, we have a lot of differences between some of our brothers and sisters, some of the brothers and sisters being very harsh and having some hulu, hulu meaning that they have some extremism, meaning that they go beyond the, 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 the boundaries. Going beyond the boundaries means if the Sharia is straight, if the Salat al-Mustaqim, when you go beyond it, that means you're 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 going you're going beyond it. So it's not from it. It means it's not from it. When you go beyond something, that means you're no longer inside of it. it doesn't mean they're no longer inside. They're not uh, Muslim. That's not what I'm saying. But what it means is those actions that they're doing when you're being extreme, you're doing something which is not legislated from the religion. But instead, it's better to stay within the bounds of the religion and how you deal with individuals using the fiqh and the understanding of the religion to practice those principles so that way you can refute someone based on knowledge. You can refute someone only if it's necessary to refute someone. Not refuting just because you, you heard a mistake and so you want to just put it out there and you want to gain fame from it or you want to gain status or you want to belittle the other person or you see that the other person's too popular or you have some jealousy or whatever the personal issues that we see, we've seen a lot of these things and uh, may Allah forgive us and, and the brothers and sisters I mean so we want to be cautious of that the other uh, thing that we want to be cautious of is also we have some brothers and sisters that are from Ahl Sunnah even but yet they tend to uh, belittle the principles so they totally do not believe in boycotting ever and they totally believe, so it's as if they're disregarding certain principles of the Sharia. This is also incorrect and also not within the bounds of the Sharia that they've, they've and this is why some of the ulama, they use the term mumayya, that they have uh, belittled and they've, um, they've weakened the principles. They've weakened the principles and compromised aspects of the religion. So this is what we have to be careful of as well. We don't want to be to either extreme. We want to do our best to be in the middle. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all for our many, many, many mistakes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm nafiyah, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amalim mutakabbilin. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds and forgive our bad deeds. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.